core for the opposition. What has been such a positive season for a lot certainly hasn't ended that way. For the Bombers, only five goals and a smashing against the Giants. Didn't look like they were going to kick any on Friday night for a while. They managed three. Yeah, and it was sort of building. Their last six to eight weeks were pretty poor, particularly defensively. It just leaves me thinking, OK, their profile looks exactly the same as the past four or five yeah. years. Their offence is fine. They can move the ball from their back half. They're kicking. They're one of the better kicking teams in the comp. But they just can't defend. So I'm concerned that even with Brad Scott having a full preseason, nothing has changed yet. So well, I'm, I'm concerned about the system. There's too many seagulls. Too many want the easy chip. And, and just this one, just one bit of play here. When you play an uncontested marking game and you squirt the ball in the 45 degree, you can't have everyone going for that one ball. Just have a look at how many players here are trying to suck that ball out of the hands of the kicker there to get the easy one. And it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a massive problem. Because look, look at that. The whole midfield's there. And you go down the line, you get picked off, now you're in trouble because you've been defeated by three Collingwood players to your six, seven or eight. So you can't, you've got to have a better balance than that. So that, that's really early in the game. So, so is that more about like strategy and X's and O's or more about mindset? Well, it was both. They know the strategy is to try and find those uncontested marks. So all of them there are thinking about themselves, wanting to get the footy. Look at that. Without the footy, 15th again. No, this, this is strategy. I, I, I won't hear the wash and the spin um, that others want to go with. Um, you, it was the same when they were sitting fifth on the table. It was exactly the same. Yeah. Really good with the ball. But ordinary without it. You can't be ordinary without it and expect to be a finals team, a team that's pushing up the ladder. If that stays the same next year, it'll be another wasted 12 months like this was. Huge summer ahead for the Bombers and their narrative heading into next year will be interesting indeed. A Port, the team we just don't know about enough? We're not sure how they're going to go? or um, In terms of the top four? I, I think so. I just think that there's still some gaps with them, their game defensively in particular. I know their midfield are, are superstars and that's what's going to take them a long way. But against the very best, can they hold up not only conceding 50s but defending inside their defensive 50? And Noah Bolter today versus Elia Ali. Yeah. I, I thought it was a terrific matchup. And I, it's maybe Noah's something to look at. Going forward, I thought he was outstanding. He played a full game forward today, a half game last week. He took four marks inside 50. But he was there because he's a big body against Alia for the majority of the game. Um, I'll tell you, if you, if you can deny Alia and put the pressure on the other back six to do the job defensively, you can get Port. But in saying that, Port seem to find a way to kick through you more often than not. Their ball use is a feature. Um, but you do have to have a plan for Alir. Again, don't get beaten by uh, what you know. And Alir, Alir is their, their number one defender. So I don't know where McKenzie's at and whether he's going to be cherry ripe or healthy for a, for a final series. We'll wait and see. Final word on the Tigers? I'm, I think I'm still bullish on them. I think they can spike next year and absolutely play finals. I still look at their list. They've got stacks of talent. And just a new coach and a new voice, whoever that is, um, tinker with their game plan a little bit. I, I think they can finish top six. I think McWalter had to win today. To, to guarantee the job. Well, not guarantee the job, but to, to be a viable option. I, I just don't know if he's done enough in the last four weeks to, to, to stamp himself as a senior coach at Richmond. All right. Well, Geelong and the Bulldogs, it turned out to be a win to the Bulldogs. It didn't look that way for quite a bit of the night. What was a stay of execution as they were in the eight only for under 24 hours before the Giants put them out of their misery. The trepidation that uh, Luke Beveridge had last week going into the game was well-founded in the end. They did get the win, 16-8-104 Geelong, 11-13-79 with so many of their stars out. Where yeah. does it leave the doggies? Well, they, they played up tight and tense early. I thought they were, they were highly anxious. Some, some really poor skill errors, I think, showed that and uh, they didn't really get going until they kicked three goals in a row to start that third quarter and then they felt better about themselves and they were too good for a Geelong team that would batter. But I don't know where it leaves the Western Bulldogs. They've got a lot of questions internally to ask themselves with their personnel, their system, how to get the best out of the group and what they do. I know you think it's probably a, a better result for them to miss the finals, yep. to have a real deep dive. Yeah, I do. I do. I think it would have been a, a, a false read if they made the yeah. finals this year. They haven't been good enough uh, on or off the field. Um, and that's, that's the honest truth. I think they've got to, they've got to throw their arms around Adam Trelaw. I think he's, he's a really important player for them. Um, only Bont has more score involvements at the Dogs than him. Only Bont and Liver win more clearances. Only Bont and Liver win more contested possessions. He was brilliant again on the weekend. Kicked a couple of goals, had you know, north of 30 touches again. So he's the sort of player they can't lose. And the more you look at this list, and they've got the big four out of contract next year, mm. they've got to sell a reason for those guys to stay that's not financial. Because the money will be better elsewhere. Will Norton definitely stay? Will Jamara definitely stay? Bailey Smith, is he already gone? Is he staying? What's happening? That's been weird for quite some time. 
Um, so I'm probably, and then Tim English is the same discussion. Mm. They're going to get significant offers elsewhere. But if they want to have success, do they stay or do they leave? Are they heading towards success again with Luke Beveridge or, or aren't they? What, what are your thoughts? I, I don't know. I think they hover where they hover. I, I think that's know, been, that's been yeah. their lot for four or five years now. Do, yeah. is the, is it, I know it seems obvious, but is it just too much for the Bond? Is it, like, does he even take on too much himself? You showed that great vision a few weeks ago, you know, demanding the ball. Is it, I, I watched him to... closely down at Geelong. He was doing everything in regards to instructing everyone while he was running and winning the football. He was. He was doing it all. So that's just, too much. It is it? too much. Yeah, I was watching. He, he, he coaches them on the field. So they need more. I mean, we know about their core six, but they've got a middle tier that I think are, are inconsistent with their effort. Some weeks they produce, some weeks they don't. And then I do think they have a really poor bottom six that, that just aren't um, sometimes up to AFL standard. So I know we talk about their top end talent, but they've got gaps in their list as well that need addressing. You, you were going to ask about Bont? Bont, well, I think it's whether does Bont win the Brownlow now. He, po- he probably picks up either two or the three, com- um, competing with Adam Trelaw. He gets four or five votes in the last two rounds of the year. Is it enough to win it? Do you think? What do you got Dacos on? How many votes? Well, I had Dacos probably four to six votes ahead before he went out. So it's going to be very, very close. It'll come down to the last round. So are we backing him or not? Uh, I think it might be a tie. (laughs) I mean, losing losing the the second last game and losing a few of those games coming in isn't going to help him, is it? That's for sure. So I'll wait and see. Final word on the Cats. It was good... Some good there, some some traces, and it looked like a, a Geelong sort of style. They played even without some of their, their stars. So in the end, they're going to get a much better draft pick than if they'd made the eight and, and fallen short, and it's been that sort of year. Um, so it was interesting to see. Well, yeah, I, I'm confused by Parfit. What, what, what does he ever leave this team? Why isn't he He becoming... played well. well yeah, he's that's good. the best he's played yeah. all year. It was yeah. confusing to see, wasn't it? It was. Give so, an opportunity. A, a bit like Adam Trelaw. Throw but, your arms around him, tell but, him but you love him, But he did have some opportunity in. In, the, in the sort of late middle part of the year and didn't look anywhere near his best, but no, he, he certainly was yeah. last night. No, he was terrific. And, and you sometimes just need to see it. I, I think they've got some, some real concerns. And, and they've come off a, a premiership. So, of course, you're going to have problems. You can't, you can't keep maxing out every every year, um, but the responsibility shifts now from Dangerfield to the next level yep. of midfielder, whether that's Atkins or Guthrie coming back, Holmes. what's underneath that? You know, is Holmes a top liner? Yeah. Well, is, is, he, is he? I mean, there's questions whether he's actually going to stay as well, so there's a lot to play out in the postseason. Toby Conway got showed a, a game. Bit. He, he did a show bit. a bit. They've been waiting and waiting for that, so he might be the answer in the ruck. Who knows? I could go on and on about the Cats, <laughs> but they won't let me. So, in the end, the West Coast Eagles... Uh, Do finish on the bottom of the ladder after all the the rigmarole the last couple of weeks, courtesy of the Kangaroos. Um, They weren't able to stop Tex Walker kicking nine, then they weren't able to get the four points in the end. They did look for a while there like they they could have maybe just thrown another um, spatter in the works, but you just take a look at the last six weeks of the season. The West Coast Eagles won more quarters than Richmond, Essendon, the Gold Coast Suns and Geelong. They won, they won 10 quarters. Those teams all won less than that. So they made some progress. It helped when they had some senior players that were fit and available out there. So I've got no doubts they'll be much more competitive next year. The assessments on West Coast with Jeremy McGovern versus mm. without are, are poles apart. Mm. They really are. And look, I, I don't know whether they continue with Adam Simpson or not. And I don't know whether they'll make a decision or make a public announcement on that decision for, for, for a little while. Maybe let the dust settle. I don't think it matters either way. You're going to get a similar result out of this squad next year, regardless of, of who's coaching, in my opinion. So why not stick with the guy that you're financially committed to anyway? I don't see the value in it, unless you feel the message is tired. And you only know that if you're in-house. You only know that directly from the players' mouths. So there's got to be, got to be some honesty had internally over there, um, and I'm sure they're seeking that in the next couple of days. Yeah, it felt like the decision was going to be made sooner rather than later. We haven't heard anything today, so I guess we'll wait and see whether it is in the next couple of days or it does go a little bit longer. So what about uh, the Adelaide Crows then? What, what might have been the season really inaccurate kicking in some games? We know their record on the road are good against some teams without getting the win and ultimately they fall short with 11 wins, 12 losses. But really the base is there now, isn't it? Yeah. While Tex can still be a force up forward, it's a lot's got to happen for them next year. Yeah, I think that obviously the hard luck story of the year with the inaccuracy, some close losses, some bad luck. And the review. And the review, exactly. Right. <laughs> I see them, to be honest, I, see them, the I see them like the Carlton of this year, that they can use the bad luck and the, the near misses um, and the, the adversity that they go through to, to build some resilience and take a big leap next year. I think they're, they're, not, they're not lacking for much, Kingy. I think they, no. they are the big spike next year. They've been inconsistent in game. And I think that um, the more football that I see Shelley and Rankin yeah. play together, and you touched on this very early in the piece, you were I can first onto this, they're so exciting that they're going to grab, take that town by storm. 
I think they'll, they'll have a big... Mm. They're, they're one team that I could see spiking into the four. Not, not just limping into the eight and being an also-ran first week. I think they've they got higher aspirations from that. They're a destination club now. Who can they? It's about now your off-field departments taking over and getting some talent, stack some talent yeah. in there. And if they can, you can see there, the guy can clearly coach with what he's got at the moment. It's amazing they're not in the finals, mm -hmm. given their profile. Yeah, there could be a few teams in the finals that are, that are glad that the Crows aren't. Well, North Melbourne and the Gold Coast, uh, they didn't have anything to play for in terms of finals, but uh, it did in the end with North Melbourne's win and the attitude we heard from Alistair Clarkson and over the weekend was about winning. They did it unexpectedly and they did it well. Yeah, they did. And they get the pep in the step and they can look forward to next pre-season and, and make some strides. I think they've got a heap of work to do with their defensive, um, not their personnel, but also their system. And if they can do that and Clarko can start to build that, they can start to get the wheels rolling. It's amazing you know, what Nick Larkey's oh, done to this football it is club. Amazing. I've always said that he's the most important magnet to the rebuild. I just, I just thought we'd have a look at the percentage of goals per, for his team. It's almost 30%. It's the highest in the league. You know, I know the All-Australian discussions is a different one and it's skewed by how you, how you individually or personally see these guys and their impact on games of football and it can be different for you to me and, and same for you, Otto. But that's extraordinary what he's doing. It, re it really is extraordinary. Yep. In a team that's underperforming, he's fighting 2v1, 3v1 on occasion. He's not getting quality coming in. And he's, had, he's had coach after coach after coach. And to perform like that this year when the club needed him most, he has to be in the All-Australian team. He has to be recognised and rewarded. In the, in the rewarded. final 22. In the 22. Yep. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't mark around with the 40s. I don't even know what the squad of 40 is. That he has to be in the 22. He's had a better year, in my opinion, than, than Tex. Well, they got massive goals, Charlie and, and Taylor Walker, didn't they, against West Coast and mm. big numbers against North. Uh, so Nick didn't get to play against North. And so, but in the end, Charlie's uh, on top. Would you of have it. him in yours or not? No, because I think more. I think Charlie and Tech, Taylor Walker set up more goals. Well, they're high with their score involvements and their their score assists. Larky's a, a pure finisher. The other two, I think, are also the, the architects with some offence. Fair call. There you go. All right. I'll shut that up. No, no, it's, it's a good case. You can make anyway, a case. Move on, you can make a case. <laughs> well, what about the Suns then? It was an up and down finish to the year, wasn't it, under Stephen King? One week good, the next week a little bit disappointed. But there, there's so much there for Damien Harbick to play with. Couldn't be more excited about this group. I'm in love with the list. We, I think we all are. When you have a deep look at what's coming in the next 12 months or so, it, it's hard not to think that Damien Harbick will have this group in a new plan matching what the list possesses, yeah, which, is, which is significant talent and elite. This guy, in my opinion, under Hardwick, will win a Brownlow. Simple as that. Noah Anderson. He's, he's playing unbelievable football. His, his vision is, 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 is ridiculous. I don't know how he sees these targets, let alone hit them. He put on a clinic yesterday, and he has done all year. He, he averages close to 30. He got a great mix of inside out. I mean, that's lace out, Levi. You've got to catch them. And then he has the ability to, to, to do a little bit of dancing in, in tight and, and put his teammates in a great space. I, I think he's, the, he's already an elite performer. I just think he'll break into the top five or six in the competition next year with, with a rigid plan and some, and some role players covering for him on occasion. Does, does Martin have the game set up for him by Dimmer? This, mm. this will be the same. The, weapon, the absolute weapons get a great run with Damien. This guy, he'll play more attacking footy than defensive footy in the next 12 months and look out. They are going to be really interesting next. I mean, there's so many teams that you can sort of mount a there case is. for. So it's not just going to happen for them. No, it's going to be so competitive. There are so many teams outside the eight you could see playing finals next year. Yeah. Well, I wonder whether Fremantle will be one of those teams who obviously uh, fell out of the eight this year. When you look back at their season, midway through the year, they were just outside the eight and it looked like they were, had rebuilt a little yeah. bit, but they didn't finish well. Or they would argue their last six weeks were actually quite competitive and they were against a few teams and they were definitely good yesterday. They played good footy at the MCG and it was a bit of a reality check for Hawthorne. Yeah, perhaps. and what might surprise a few, just take a look at the age and games profile of the two sides. These are two of the youngest teams in the competition. Fremantle were actually slightly younger um, yesterday with the less games. So they're, they're on similar paths, but I think we saw from that game Fremantle are, are well ahead of where Hawthorne are at with uh, with where they're going. The, the last six weeks were good. They well found ahead. Well ahead of Hawthorne, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we could see that, that they've progressed a bit further. The games they've got into Tracy and Amos in the forward line, I think is going to be a huge key for them going forward. They but do have a bit more up forward now, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they Hawthorne are. Hawthorne obviously rely on Mitchell also when he's not there. Yeah. It looks very different. What's yeah. their point of difference? What's this coach's point of difference? What, what does he do, Justin Longmuir, that challenges other teams to beat Fremantle? 
Well, I think that was the year before the, the, the identity was their defence and their contest. They were really strong. Remember, they were an elite defensive team. They just lost that elite edge defensively. So that's probably something they're going to have to try and find back their DNA. But no doubt they've got to get a bit quicker with their, their ball off turnover and be able to punish teams when they win the footy back. And they found one late in Emmett. He's, uh, he looks yeah. a, a, real, a real player, which is a bonus late in the season. The Hawks, they do rely a lot on the, on the four established midfielders um, who uh, yesterday couldn't quite get the job done. <coughs> and Sam Mitchell did talk about, you know, that was a, they're not... Not as close as what some people think, but yeah. there's been a lot of good and then there's been some pretty disappointing performances. Yeah, and I think they need to start building their defensive profile. So we talked about defence. It's four years in a row now, they're bottom four for, for defence. And um, again, it's almost a bit, if Sicily's not there, what does their defensive system look like? So, so I think that's got to be a fair... Another key defender. Another key defender. And as much as it's personnel, they've got to, they've, I think they've got to start to build that brand because everyone's loved their offence and, and their flair. And it's looked great at times and they've challenged the best teams. But to be consistent and be consistently good, that without the footy profile has got to start to improve next year. Yeah, which which it did. It, it did from uh, round 17 or round 18 onwards, yeah. the last six or seven weeks of the season. So now, if you look at the, if you break the season in half, I think there's massive gains for what Sam Mitchell's been able to do, and he's got he's got those three or four midfielders coming through yeah. that are going to drive him for a decade. What, yeah. what an asset that is.